Too often on Tales from the Bottle do we focus on war, death and destruction. The fact that those topics seem to pull a lot more views probably says something about human nature. And the fact that I exploit this by making more videos on those topics probably says something about me. But please consider I have to spend a full week researching, writing, drawing, recording and editing every single one of these topics. That's a long time to be steeped in war, death and destruction, especially when I'm making a new video every week. I do like to take a break from human misery every now and then, God knows my own is enough. So here's a story about a baboon working on a railway. In the late 1800s, James Wide, or Jumper Wide to his friends, was a double leg amputee working on the railway line between Port Elizabeth and Cape Town in South Africa. Seems a bit cruel to nickname a double leg amputee Jumper, but he had actually earned his name years before while he was working as a guard for the railway. He was known to jump and swing from car to car while working the line, hence the nickname Jumper, until one day he fell between two moving cars and lost his legs at the knees. And as the song goes, he ain't gonna jump no more. Having no legs was a bit of an obstacle on his career path as a guard, and Wyde went unemployed for a while. Low though he was in physical form, he kept his spirits high, making a pair of peg legs and rejoining the railway, this time as a signalman at a small station in the town of Eitenhaga. Although he was still able to walk with the aid of a crutch, Wyde's mobility was greatly reduced. While he was able to perform his tasks as signalman, he lived half a mile away from the signal box, so the journey to and from work was a bit troublesome. Thus he was inspired to build a small trolley with which he could wheel himself around on. James Wyde worked like this for several years until one day he came across a life-changing scene at the Eitenauga marketplace. An ox cart that was being driven by a monkey. <laughs> a baboon to be exact. Wyde was astonished and approached the owner. The owner explained the monkey was unusually intelligent so he had trained him to do some basic tasks for him. This gave James an idea. With his restricted mobility, such a helper would make his life much easier. He persuaded the owner to sell him the monkey. Sounds like a pretty hard sell giving away your trained monkey, but honestly, the amount of people who probably stopped this guy to ask about the working monkey probably negated any of the time saved by the monkey doing the work. It's probably less hassle for him to just do everything himself. And so James named the monkey Jack and took him to work with him every day. Jack soon became invaluable to James, learning to push and pull his trolley around, as well as providing companionship, alleviating the boredom and loneliness of working the signal box all day. And soon Jack picked up other tasks. When an approaching train required more coal, it would sound the whistle four times to alert James, who would then fetch the keys to the coal shed and have them ready for the driver. Observing this, Jack eventually learned that four whistles was the signal to fetch the keys and started doing it himself. White even managed to teach Jack how to operate the railway signals, holding up a number of fingers to indicate which lever needed to be pulled. And suddenly, James White's job had become very easy, his workday probably being less intensive on him than an able-bodied signalman. From this point on, Jack was promoted from Jack the Baboon to Jack the Signalman. Isn't evolution amazing? He became a local celebrity and passengers would sometimes toss him treats from the windows. James developed a unique bond with Jack and the two became quite close. They came to enjoy their commute on the trolley with Jack hopping on board for the ride when he had pushed the trolley to the top of a hill. James paid Jack his wages and alcohol, without which the monkey would supposedly sulk and refuse to perform his duties. Ah yes, monkey, railway signals, alcohol, a recipe for success. Well apparently it was, because Jack the signalman was reportedly very good at his job and never made a mistake. After nine years of service, Jack developed tuberculosis and died in 1890, leaving James wide, broken hearted and alone. Ah, there's the human misery. Well, I suppose I could only get away from it for so long. Today, Jack's skull is on display in the Albany Museum in Grahamstown, South Africa. So, if you ever find yourself in the area, make sure to pay tribute to the best goddamn signalman to ever live. And while you're here, make sure to pay tribute to the best goddamn YouTuber to ever live. Me. Just like Jack, I will accept alcohol as my weekly wages, but I will also accept subscribing, following me on Twitter, checking out my second channel, Cukeser2, donating to me on Patreon, and buying my lovely, lovely t-shirts. Right so, cheers. Is that another bottle? Beat the Jesus. It's my lucky day. Two bottles! 
Well, now I have none. Hello! Yep.